I'm Andrew Messitz, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our service this morning. Please join me in waving hello to our online friends. Your, your presence adds to our spiritual community. We appreciate you. Now before we begin our service, let's all take a moment to check our cell phones and make sure that they are completely off. Thank you. And please join me in welcoming our special guests, Karen Taylor Good. Karen is a Grammy-nominated musician who has graced New Thought churches around the country with her poignant and inspiring music and Sunday morning sermons and songs. As a vocal artist, Karen has had her jingles on national radio and television for United Airlines, Taco Bell, and many more. She is recorded with notable performers such as Dolly Parton, Al Green, and Willie Nelson. As a solo artist, Karen has had nine nationally charted singles, and she has garnered several Songwriter of the Year awards. Now let's open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. 
Please join me in prayerfully and powerfully speaking it together three times. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's continue by reading aloud the statement of our unity. Together. God's love is within each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ's teachings and in all spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. Now our heart minister, Jack Schaefer, will read from Unity's Daily Word. The word for today is inner peace. The silence is a period of meditation during which my thoughts are withdrawn from the external world and concentrated upon the inner truths of God. The indwelling presence of God is the very essence of the silence. As I meditate, I sense God's presence as stillness. My mind is quiet. If I have been experiencing unsettledness in my life, I devote time today to silent prayer. In the silence, I invite compassion, wisdom, and grace into my heart and mind. I step fully into the kingdom of God within me. Centered in the power of God, I gather strength and clarity. By choosing to go within rather than react, I experience the peace of God. From this space of peace, I respond to life with love. From the scripture, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness. Today's affirmation, in the silence, of, in the silence my heart and mind are centered in God. And please repeat that after me. In the silence, my heart and mind are centered in God. So this is another new one. I'm going to invite you just to put your hands out and accept this from us, and then I'll invite you to sing it. Put your hand over your heart. 
This is for you, to you, from you. I am love, I am strength, I am forgiveness, I am love, and I can see me as I am. Now let's hold our hands out and send that out to the world. to highlight a few upcoming events. The details of these and under other wonderful activities are in your bulletin and on our website. Well, it's birthday Sunday, so if anyone has a birthday in August, you can stand on up. Oh. Oh. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. You still have an opportunity to sign up for our week-long spiritual education enrichment classes. Please visit our SEE team on the patio. Come and join the fun at Italian Night Rock and Rigatoni on Saturday, September 10th. <laughs> Italian buffet, music, comedy, singing waiters, and much more. Tickets are on sale on the patio and in the bookstore during the week. Now, Luis Delu has an announcement for us. Come on, you don't want to miss the boat. <laughs> Hi, I'm David DeLue. And I'm Louise DeLue. We're the two DeLues. <laughs> and, and we're saying two DeLue because we're going on the Unity Cruise the World on the Love Boat auction and dinner. When is it? It's Saturday evening, October 15th. Where do we board? Center Concord. You know, you follow the ocean along Ignacio Valley Road to the big dock next to the bowling alley. It's going to be so much fun, so save the date. October 15th. So we're going to enjoy music and food and decorations from our ports of call all around the world. And we're going to be dazzled by our own Mark Martinez in the South Pacific Lounge. We're going to bid on amazing items donated by our Unity community and by local merchants. Tickets will go on sale the beginning of September, but for now... We need all of your help. You've got to stop by our table and, and let's talk about how you can make this a wonderful event with us. We need your donations. If you don't know what to donate, come on out. Have we got ideas for you? <laughs> <laughs> we need many, we have many volunteer opportunities. Volunteering <laughs> will make the evening so much more fun for you. Stop by our table and say hi. Toodaloo! <laughs> Thank you. And you can purchase our musician CD at the bookstore after the service. Now it's time to welcome our guests. If you're here with us for the first time, we invite you to raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. We welcome you into our spiritual community and we truly appreciate your being with us. Please keep your hand in the air while our ushers bring you our gift of a shell lay. On that lay is an affirmation we share with each of you that says, 
Just as God has, has a design for every shell of the sea, so God has a design for your heart. We have a new blessing which you will see on our monitors. Please join me as you open your arms to send a sincere blessing from our hearts as we affirm together. We love you, we bless you, and we behold the light of God shining through you. Thank you for joining us today. Now enjoy taking a moment until the music begins to greet the people around you. to dance do you know now spirit loves to dance everybody sing spirit loves to dance oh yeah spirit loves to dance i shine i shine be dance be dance i'd see i'd see when given a chance when given a chance now spirit loves to dance don't you know now spirit loves to dance Everybody sing, Spirit loves to dance. Spirit loves to dance. One more time, now. Spirit loves to dance. Everybody now, Spirit loves to dance. Spirit loves to dance. Don't you know now? Spirit loves to dance to the top. I shine, I shine. Be dance, be dance. I'd see, I'd see. When given a chance. When given a chance, your spirit loves to dance. Spirit Everybody loves now, spirit loves to dance. Sing it with the spirit loves to dance. Don't you know? Spirit loves to dance. One more time now, spirit loves to dance. Everybody now, spirit loves to dance. Oh yeah, spirit loves to dance. You got it. Spirit loves to dance. I would like to invite Karen to the platform to lead our meditation. We invite you to prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, which will begin through music. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to do a little musical meditation this morning. <clears throat> get in a meditative place. Um, I had a rather large birthday recently. <laughs> and I was doing okay with it until I picked up a People magazine <laughs> and noticed the article, the page on looking good at any age. And then they had the row of 20-somethings <laughs> looking good. And they had the row of 30-somethings looking good. And the 40-somethings and the 50-somethings. And then it stopped. <laughs> and then I chanced to pick up another magazine that had beauty tips for your skin at any age. And it gave tips for your 20-year-old skin, for your 30-year-old skin, for your 40-year-old skin, for your 50-year-old skin, and then Stop. So I wasn't doing so good anymore, and I happened to be hanging out with my sweet sister and friend Karen Drucker, and she said, we need to write a song for you, because I need to help you remember the truth. So that's what this song is, and sometimes we need a trusted friend to remind 
realness of the truth, and I hope you'll allow me to be that trusted friend for you. Um, just in case you've been beating yourself up about any birthday that you might have had recently, or perhaps what the scale said this morning, or any other club that you may choose in your life to beat yourself up with, I, I am ready to uh, lay some truth on you here. So I hope you'll take these words to be your own. I am a gift, no matter what age, no matter how I look, no matter what I weigh. I am a gift, and I promise every day, when I look in the mirror, I'll say, I am a gift. Repeat that line with me, please. message and music today. And I figure that the best thing, I just want to share a little about me. And since I've already written the story, condensed nicely, I thought I would just read it to you. It's called Unanswered Prayers. I feel very blessed indeed to be doing what I love to do, writing songs that matter to me, singing them myself, and putting them out to the world to do good. I have discovered my gift. Finally. <laughs> it did take me a while. I always knew that I had been given the gift of a good singing voice. Well, okay then, said I in my early 20s. I'll be in Holiday Inn cover band singing Proud Mary to really drunk people until 2 in the morning. That must be what I'm supposed to do with this gift. Well, it didn't take me too long to figure out that eh, wasn't quite right. In my mid-20s, I moved to Memphis and I began to use my voice in a different way. I punched a time card at 8.30 in the morning, went into the studio, and sang whatever was put in front of me. 
K-E-L-P, El Paso, W-S-I-X, Nashville. And endless jingles touting dog food, toilet paper, etc., etc., until 3.30 in the afternoon when I punched out. It felt a little more right than the Holiday Inn gigs, but not much. I turned 30. Nashville was right down the road. Okay, I bet I'm supposed to be a country music star. I forgot to ask myself some pertinent questions like, Karen, do you really want to be a country music star? Do you want to be on a bus 285 days a year? Do you like singing songs that other people write for you? But I had no choice, for I had not been chosen to be a writer of songs. That gift was reserved for the few, the blessed, the truly talented. Four years and 10 nationally charted country radio singles later, I was actually nominated for an Academy of Country Music Award. Best new female artist. Ah, at last. This would be it. This was why I had been given a voice. I was supposed to sing other people's songs and get played on the radio and be cute and sexy and famous. <laughs> I went to a psychic. <laughs> she told me I was going to win. And I will put a PS in here for you. It's not just that I wanted to win this award. It's that I had gotten this far by borrowing money from the bank on my own independent label. And the banks were calling back, wanting that money. <laughs> so I knew that if I won this award, then a major label would have to sign me, and then my destiny would be clear, and I would become that country music star I was supposed to be. <laughs> I went out to LA. There I was, among the stars. This is it, here goes, live network TV. I did my performance, I went backstage, and I waited to hear my name called. And the winner is Nicolette Larson. <laughs> Oh no, this just can't be. This was my award, this was my path. What happened? What went wrong? I spiraled down into a deep, dark depression which lasted for months and months. Thanks a lot, God, I cried. You gave me this voice and I've tried and tried to figure out why, but nothing I do works out. I was hurting so deeply that I had to do something. I needed to express what I was feeling. I needed to write it down. I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. Then I began to read what I was writing and I wondered, could it be? I crept over to the piano in the dark of one night and I nervously, cautiously put my hands to the keyboard. The music came pouring out. The words turned into song lyrics. I sang my words about what was in my heart, set to my music, and the world came into focus, and I knew why I was here. I'm getting better every day at trusting that there really is a plan, and that even though I have no idea what it looks like, somebody clearly does. <laughs> The way my life should go And when I used to say my prayers I would tell God so It seemed he wasn't listening I thought he didn't care But looking back it's plain to see He was always there Sometimes 
The answer to a prayer is no. If you are feeling battered and bruised from all of the doors slamming shut in front of you, hang in there. Those doors are closing for a reason. You are a precious child of God and you are being pushed, nudged, and guided toward your destiny. Okay. Now, I wish, I mean that was such a God thing, wasn't it? It was a setup, right? It was a God thing and you'd think that after that, that I would have stopped writing scripts for my life, right? And I would have just started meditating every morning and waiting for the word to come. I wish I could tell you that was true. <laughs> but I would be lying, of course. No, I just wrote a new script, and the new one was, hey, now I'm a songwriter. I'm going to be a rich and famous songwriter overnight. <laughs> Not quite the way it happened. Um, Okay, I started writing and writing and writing. <clears throat> the way I was feeding my writing habit at that point, I, uh, I had moved up in the world. I kept an apartment up in Chicago, and I was sharing some truly moving messages with the world. Messages like this. Taco salad, ooh, what a treat. Made just for you in a bowl you can't eat. Taco Bell, it's just made for you. <laughs> so, while this was feeding my pocketbook quite nicely, it wasn't feeding my soul. And on weekends, I would go back to Nashville where I was going to um, religious science and unity. I'd go one week to one and one week to the next. Um, and I was taking classes and I was learning some principles like this, like follow your bliss and the money will come. Leap and the net will appear. Yeah? So in 1989, I leapt. I announced to the jingle business in Chicago that I was quitting that I was moving to Nashville full time to be the songwriter that I was destined to be. I forgot one very important fact. How do you get a songwriter's attention in Nashville? A waiter! <laughs> yes, I forgot that everybody in Nashville is a songwriter! So I was writing songs, they're getting better, they're getting better. Nobody cared, I couldn't get arrested. 1992, one Friday afternoon, I went to see a bankruptcy attorney. I, all the Taco Bell money was gone, all, uh, everything. My husband was playing his trombone as hard as he could. Uh, his lips were bleeding, but we were still <laughs> sinking fast. I didn't know what else to do. I go see the bankruptcy attorney on a Friday afternoon. On Sunday morning, the alarm went off, and I was supposed to go to church. And here's some more of these great principles. And I turned off the alarm, and I said, I ain't going because this stuff is stupid. And it obviously doesn't work. So I tried to go back to sleep. And I heard this little voice, and it said, go to church. 
And I said, no. <laughs> I'm depressed. And the voice got louder. Go to church. I put a pillow over my head. I did everything I could to not listen to this voice. Pretty soon, it was so loud, I had no choice. I went to church, and I was not happy to be. <laughs> Reverend Mitch was giving an amazing talk that day on saying yes to life. Oh, Reverend Mitch, who, by the way, came to Nashville to be a songwriter. Thank you. Yeah. So he gave this fabulous talk about saying yes to life and how often we all say no, even, you know, unconsciously, right? I mean, what's the first word we learn as toddlers? No. So he challenged us at the end of this fabulous talk to raise our hands and make a pledge that for one week out of our lives, seven small days, we would say yes to life as often as we could. I was into it. I raised my hand and I took that pledge. So the, the service is over and this woman walks up to me. I hardly knew her. She says, Karen, you're a songwriter, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she says, well, I have a friend. He's coming to town. Um, he's a new songwriter, just, just starting. Actually, actually, he's an actor from L.A. So will you write with him? Oh, I wish you could have heard the committee that lives in my mind. <laughs> shouting, no, no, I don't want to write with this guy. He's not even a real songwriter yet. <laughs> and not only that, he's an actor from L.A. He's probably a big jerk. He's probably got this huge ego. No, no, shouted my committee. <laughs> However, I had just taken the pledge. <laughs> wow. Let me tell you, once again, I was not happy. I was feeling really duped and tricked, and I gritted my teeth, and I said, yes. And I'm thinking I'll have this egotistical jerk over <laughs> um, for a cup of coffee, and then I would send him home. Wow. Is that not what happened? Uh, his, name, his name is uh, Burton Collins, and, and he was a very nice guy. Jack, could I get more of me in the uh, monitor? Thank you. So, very nice guy and good songwriter. And because he was a, an actor and he had also written some screenplays, he thought in, in little movie picture snippets, which was a pretty cool way to write. And he showed up at my house and he said, hey, I've got an idea for a song. I think it would make a good song, Karen. What do you think? He said, I was very close to my grandmother. And I was with her a, a year ago in the hospital. I was with her while she was dying. And she looked at me and saw that I was having a hard time. And she said, Burton, how can I help you say goodbye? He said, do you think that would make a good song? Oh. <laughs> I had some major God bumps going on. Four hours later, that song was written. And it absolutely changed my life. Uh, because of that song, that song got me, uh, a month later, a fabulous writing deal with Warner Chapel Music, the world's largest music publisher. The, um, it was a number one hit for Patti Loveless on the country charts. Mm -hmm. That got me my Grammy nomination. It's also been recorded by Al Jarreau and Patti Loveless. And uh, one of the things I think is the coolest, it's on karaoke machines. <laughs> And then 10 years after the fact, it connected me with what has now become one of my great passions, which is hospice. I mean, who are the real live angels on this planet who help us to say goodbye, right? It was, again, such a God thing. Um, I think that story has at least two morals. One, I would encourage everybody to take a pledge and just try it for a week to say yes as often as you can because some pretty miraculous things can happen. But the other, um, the other moral that I have a feeling Reverend David might agree with just might be, go to church. <laughs>
alone in her bedroom. She opened her eyes and then squeezed my hand. She said, I have to go now. My time here is over. And with her final words, she tried to help me understand. Mama whispered softly, time will ease your pain. Life's about changing. Nothing ever stays the same. And she said, How can I help you to say goodbye? It's okay to hurt and it's okay to cry. Come, let me hold you and I will try. How can I? Um, when I used to sing those jingles up in Chicago, there was, there was a time when I would be called to do auditions for these Barbie doll, these Barbie doll commercials, these Saturday morning commercials that run forever and pay residuals, and all I wanted was a Barbie doll commercial. And it never failed. I would go into the studio and I would sing whatever sweet song somebody had written, and then it would be over. And from the control room where all the ad agency guys were and all the music house people, there would be a beat of silence. And then they would push the talk back button and they would say, uh, Karen, can you sing that any, any differently? Because we're all in here crying and that's not going to work. <laughs> and it used to make me so angry. Again, I'm like, come on, God, all I want to do is sing songs and, and sell Barbie dolls. And, and you give me this voice that makes people cry. <laughs> and then later on, I found that I have a voice that helps people to cry. Mm -hmm. So I apologize. I know that... Uh, if you need some Kleenex, raise your hand. Oh, Somebody's oh sweet. Okay. So nowadays, my prayer is all about getting my songs out to more people. Thank God I'm over the being famous part and all that. I just want these songs that come through me to get out to more people. And so there I was a while back, getting ready to say the prayer that I really wanted to pray. And what I wanted to say was this. So God, if I could just be on Oprah. <laughs> That's exactly what the committee that lives in my mind did. It cracked up. And immediately, I got so sheepish and shy. I was like, wow, Karen, that's really pushy. And besides that, everybody wants to be on Oprah. So I backed way off. And the prayer I actually ended up praying that day was something rather sheepish like this. Well, gee, God, I don't know. Like, maybe if I could be on TV. Ah, I learned in that instant that we must be very specific with our prayers. Because it wasn't two months after that that I was invited to be on the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> oh, trust me, Oprah, it ain't. So this is why I wrote this song, was to remind myself, you could start this if you'd like, Jack. Um, remind myself and all of us, if we're going to play on this planet, we might as well learn to think big. I was standing by this fisherman out there on the bridge. He bagged small one after small one, put them in his little fridge. Then he caught himself a whopper, and I watched him throw it back. I couldn't help but ask him, hey man, why'd you do that? Well, he pulled out this little skillet and said, see, it wouldn't fit. It was none of my business, but I couldn't help but wish. You get a bigger pan, get a bigger pan. When you got big dreams, for heaven's sake, don't throw those dreams back in the lake. It's not that you can't have it all. You've just been dreaming way too small. So get a bigger pan, get a bigger pan. I've been thinking like that fish 
Sherman more times than I could count. Every time I felt unworthy and ran myself down. I'd get afraid and wouldn't play what I had there on the line. Thinking that the big fish couldn't possibly be mine. But there's another fish to fry and there's another day. Next time I hook the big one, I won't let him get away. I'll get a bigger pan, <laughs> get a bigger pan. Cause I got big dreams for heaven's sake. Well, throw those dreams back in the lake. It's not that I can't have it all. I've just been dreaming way too small. I'll get a bigger pan, I'll get a bigger pan. It figured out for self-esteem as well as dreams and trout. Get a bigger pair! Get a bigger pair! Cause we got big dreams for heaven's sake. We'll throw those dreams back in the lake. It's not that we can't have it all. We've just been dreaming way too small. We'll get a bigger pair! Get a bigger pair! Get a bigger pan! Get a bigger pan! Get a bigger pan! <laughs> Thank you. Well, well, I want to, um, I want to tell you a little bit about, sometimes my songs come through me for my own healing. And since we're all one, a lot of times it works for you as well. So I suspect that several people in this room are going through a similar situation. Um, let me tell you about my mama. This song is about my mama. My mama was a Leo. She belonged to Mensa, the Society for Genius IQ People. She was the quintessential Jewish mother. She really was, which is why I think of myself as a Junity person. <laughs> <laughs> For up until the last eight years of her life, if you had asked me to come up with one word to describe her, it would have been sharp. She was just the sharpest person on the planet. Oh, she made this ring. I'm telling you, she was something else. She ended up legally blind from macular degeneration and um, uh, living in a dementia care unit. And when this first started happening, in spite of my 25 plus years of incredible New Thought teachings, I went to some very dark places. Um, I was railing at God saying, what is this? This is so mean and so unfair. The good news is I didn't stay there long. I figured, you know, either these principles work or they don't. And I know they work. So I had to find the perfection, even in this, even in this situation that my mama was going through. And I have to tell you, I couldn't find it by myself. I found it through the writing of this song, and I've never been more grateful to be a songwriter. This is the woman who had all the answers, the one I would lean on for comfort, for strength. She's never forgotten one grandchild's birthday. Now she can't remember my name. And it makes me so angry. I shake my fist and cry out to the Heavenly One. Why would you play such a cold-hearted trick? I thought your job was to love. And the answer came down from above. She's gonna fly when her time here is through. First she'll have to let go of some things she can't use. Cause people and places, memories and faces, are just way too heavy, it seems, to carry on angels' wings. This is the 
the woman who saw things so clearly, the one who could pick out one crumb on the floor. She saw through a white lie, saw me through love's eyes. She hardly can see anymore. And it makes me so sad, and it just isn't fair. Why should so much be taken away? But when I cry out for all that she's lost, I silently hear someone say, she's gonna fly when her time here is through. For she'll have to let go. things she can't use as people and places memories and faces are just way too heavy it seems to carry on angels wings and oh the wonder she'll see and I know she'll remember to watch Take a walk, find a support group, consume moderate amounts of chocolate, <laughs> take good care of yourself. My heart is with you. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more song to share as part of my sermon and song. Listen, this life is not easy, is it? No. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you, when is the last time that you patted yourself on the back and said, congratulations. Congratulations for still being here, for showing up at church, for getting through all of the difficulties of this life, and still being a player. I know it's hard to do. I know it's also easier to do in song. So I wrote a song for us, and I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you the choruses. Here, here's how they go. Ready? <laughs> me, me. Oh, I forgot to tell you the name of the song, which I stole from my husband. One day he said to me, you know, I couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> Therefore, that's the name of the song, and the chorus goes like this. Me, 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 I couldn't have done it without me, 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 that's who I'm talking about. Sing it with me, here we go. Me, 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 I couldn't have done it without me, 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 that's who I'm talking about. Excellent. And there's one other part I want you to sing. I'll bring you in like this. Two, three, four. Uh, I think I'm fabulous. <laughs> I know that one's a challenge for many. We've got to do it. Here we go. Two, three, four. Uh, I think I'm fabulous. Yes. Okay. You may start this. Year. I'll see you on the court. I'm grateful to God, Mother Earth, Father Time, the universe, whoever it might be. But today I'm thanking the one I usually don't. 
I couldn't have done it without me. Here we go. Me, 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 me. I couldn't have done it without me, 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 me. That's who I'm talking about. Yeah. That was very good. Can you crank the music up some? Yes. We need some crankage here. My talents might be God given. And to that I say amen. But it's me who studied and worked and planned. And most times I forget to thank me, 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 me. I couldn't have done it without me, 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 me. That's who I'm talking about. Two, three, four. Uh, I think I'm fabulous. This is usually understated. is highly overrated. I want to give myself equal credit now. Everybody else gets some. It's just like snowflakes and grains of sand. There's uniquely only one me, 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 me. I couldn't have done it without me. I'm talking about yeah, me, 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 me. I couldn't have done it without me, 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 me. Watch this one. That's who I'm talking. That's who I'm talking. That's who I'm talking about. Thank you. It was nice. If you would like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, please ask our heart ministers. They will, they will be available after the service here in the sanctuary and out on the patio. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. You are also invited to place a prayer in the prayer request box by the front door and the book center or by pressing the prayer request button on our website. We will be praying with you throughout the week. Now it's time for our prosperity celebration. For love and action or credit card donations, there are envelopes provided on the back of each chair. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all your good. Repeat our affirmation with me. Together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I get to sing one more song for you during the month. But before, let me just, let me say, um, your Reverend David loves you so much. He, and I know you know that. He is such a dear man. And he's very, very careful about who he allows to come and minister to you. Um, and I appreciate him very much for that. So I just wanted you to know how much he loves you. And I also wanted you to know that if you enjoyed this, please thank Megan. Megan worked really hard to get me here. And uh, I thank her so much. You guys have a terrific music director here. I really <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I also want to, uh, I want to tell you, because people always get confused, there is a CD in the book, too. And I will be, it has all the songs that uh, have to do with the book, and I would love to meet you and hug your neck and sign your book or CD um, there. Now, here's the last song. Uh, does the offertory happen now? Yes, that's it. Oh, yeah. is it? Oh, okay. when I start. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I forgot to ask that. Okay, so I don't have anything to say. This, uh, it's a bluegrass god song. I live in Nashville, I have to write it. <laughs> I was feeling kind of down nobody really cared so I crawled under the covers where I could say my prayers I said God if you love me why don't you show a sign I fell asleep soon after and this dream came to my mind I found myself in 
to a great beyond in a great big house, and the house was God's, and he took me by the hand and led me to his kitchen, and taped up to his giant fridge were pictures of me as a kid, and every drawing that I ever did was with her. But there's no higher high, no feeling greater than seeing yourself on God's refrigerator. as his child, or that he was thinking of me so dearly all the while. But there I was up on that door for all the world to see. I was precious to him, and he thought the world of me. And there I was in the great beyond, in a great big house, and the house was God's, and he took me by the hand and led me to his kitchen. And taped up to this giant fridge were pictures of me as a kid. And every drawing that I ever did was for her. Well, there's no higher high, no feeling greater than seeing yourself on God's refrigerator. Okay, why don't we clap? Stand up if you want to. Claw if you know how. Do we have any clawers in the room? I found myself in the great beyond in a great big house, and the house was God's. He took me by the hand and let me do his picture. And taped up to this giant fridge were pictures of me as a kid, and every drawing that I was the book. Well, there is no higher, higher, no feeling greater now than seeing yourself on God's refrigerator. Or just in case you ever feel forgotten and blue. Well, I saw pictures of you up there too. Bless our children. Children, you are love special and important. God loves you and so do we. All right, now let's bless our love offering. We give thanks for these gifts and commit them to expanding the consciousness of love in our world. All right, now let's stand and join hands for our prayer of protection. Words are on the wall. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God washes over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. And our peace song. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be. Each other in perfect harmony. 
and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun! I'm gonna do that every day. I'm gonna do that every day. I'm gonna do that every day. Every day of my life. To love I'm gonna do that every day. I'm gonna do that every day. I'm gonna do that every day, every day of my life. God gave me two ears to hear the word and one heart to love you. I'm gonna do that every day. I'm gonna do that every day. I'm gonna do that every day. Every day, every day of my life. 